Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. So in this video we are going to be unboxing this motherboard. So you can see I already have the box open, that's just because I, um, I'm not really too good at opening these priority mailboxes, as I'm sure a lot of my longtime viewers know. Um, so I just kind of opened it. I also have my address covered, so also the seller's address, not that that really matters, but um, yeah, so like I said in this video, we're going to be unboxing this. So while I do that, um, that was easy. It also comes with a IO shield, which is pretty nice. Um, while I do that, I'm going to talk a bit about this. So this is a Intel server board, as you can tell by the title. And the reason I bought it was because, uh, two reasons actually. Uh, the first is a few videos back, we took a look at a... Uh, a Dell motherboard, and that one had some damage, also some damage that I did, as I'm sure the viewers of that video know. Uh, if you're wondering what I'm talking about, I put it in the sink. And so, um, basically, I ended up just getting this board because I wanted a good replacement for that, because uh, my other boards, like, didn't they had bad PCIe lanes, etc. Uh, so I bought this, and the other reason is really it was an impulse buy. I've been looking for an ATX uh, socket 1155 motherboard uh, for cheap, and they're either like $16 shipped from China with two month shipping and no IO shield, or they're like $300 uh, with bad pictures. Uh, so this one, I just searched uh, 1155 motherboard, and this was at the very top. And I was like, okay, that looks pretty good. So I bought this. It was $50. It was kind of an impulse buy. Actually, it was almost entirely an impulse buy. Um, and I, after buying it a few days later, uh, after it had shipped and everything, so I couldn't really cancel my order, um, I remembered that sometimes uh, Intel server boards only support i3s and Xeons. So... Um, this might not actually work with my CPU, not entirely sure. It's not officially supported on Intel's, on the uh, Intel Arc website, so we'll have to look more into that. But, uh, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and take a look at it in more detail in a sec. We're also going to be testing it and seeing if it indeed does work with my processor. So it is socket 1155, as I said already. Uh, that's there. It's a server board, so it has a kind of different layout. This is how a normal ATX board would be, and its RAM slots are uh, 90 degrees and stuff. Has a lot of PCIe expansion. That's good because I'm going to be putting a graphics card uh, and also testing some uh, network cards and stuff in it. Uh, on the back, you can see. Uh, dual LAN, uh, four USB, VGA, and serial. It's very dusty, um, so I'll clean that off. Uh, what else? Anything? There's not really anything else noteworthy about it. Um, so, yeah, it also has six SATA ports, so four black ones and four white ones. Not sure if it's like SATA 2 and SATA 3 or something. Also has an internal USB port. Um, and just kind of a disclaimer, this isn't server related. I didn't buy this to put it in a server necessarily. I may do that if it ends up working really well and stuff, but it's not, the reason I bought this is to have another board not to put in a server. Although it would work in my server that I'm kind of planning to build. So anyway, that's beside the point. I'll continue with this. So... We are now going to uh, plug it in and uh, test it. So you can see it's quite a bit later. Sorry about the bad lighting, but the front panel header there, you can see has two wires sticking out of it. And that's because it's more along the proprietary end of things. And I looked up the pinout for that and it's kind of just like a standard header. It's just not labeled and it's really like a lot of things are clumped together on it. But I found the power and the ground, so or the power button and ground for it. So that's what those two wires are. So if I bridge those, it'll turn on. And that's what I'm going to do right now. 
So it turns on fans go to full speed or a fan because I only have a CPU cooler on it at the moment. And that goes down to an idle speed. So if I haven't gone over the configuration, I have a i7-2600 and 4 gigs of standard DDR3 in there. Doesn't look like we're getting anything. The machine seems to have posted to some extent. So yeah, it looks like the i7 indeed is not supported in this board, which is good because I discovered that while I was actually looking through some documentation and I ended up ordering a Xeon. That Xeon cost me around $40, so um, it's a Xeon E3-1220 first generation. It doesn't have like a V2 or anything, or a V1 for that matter. So that should be in the mail in about a week now, so I guess I will wait that out, and when it comes in the mail, unbox it, install it in the board, and we will test everything in one shot. So the Xeon came in the mail yesterday. Uh, I just got around to opening it today, of course. Uh, same with the last, uh, when we unboxed the motherboard, I just opened the packaging. I didn't look inside or anything other than seeing the packing peanuts. Also, something I kind of thought was funny was it's it was shipped in a priority mailbox, and you can see uh, one rate, any weight, asterisk, so it's, it's not actually any weight. I uh, just kind of thought that was funny that they uh, specified that. So, um, dump out our packing peanuts. If you really want to make your parents mad, what you can do is take these and like uh, crumple them up like that a little bit. Well, actually a lot. And throw them on the carpet. That'll really make your parents mad. I know from experience, I used to do that when I was with my parents. Uh, we're never happy when that happened, so... Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll clean those up later. I'll just toss them aside for now. You guys don't really, I'm sure don't care to see that. Um, yeah, so, Xeon. Um, open it like this. Comes in a nice anti-static bag, tiny one. Um, there we go, at the top there. So let's go ahead and uh, kind of dump this out a little bit. Bag is uh, sticky. Actually, the processor is kind of stuck in there. I don't want to ruin this bag though. There we go. That's better. So there's our Xeon here. Uh, it's, like I said, is an E3 1220. I guess you could put, you could say it's an E3 1220 parentheses V1 because it doesn't actually say V1 or V2 or whatever on it. It's just the first generation before they started doing the V2s and whatever. So I will set that there and I'm going to go down here and grab the motherboard that is still on the tray from a few nights ago when I tested it. So to move this over here, I'm going to remove the cooler. Um, I don't want to do this necessarily, but I guess it's the only way. I don't have the patience to completely remove the cooler. So I'm just going to undo these thumb screws and actually, forgive me, I don't have the uh, proper tools to remove the cooler. And by that, uh, I had a Phillips screwdriver somewhere, I'm not sure where it went, just kind of left. So. Uh, yeah, you can see a cooler. Um, I don't like taking the cooler off because the, these things fall out of the back plate and they just kind of, I can't put them back in right. Um, but yeah, so if we pull this off, you can see got our Core i7. That will be used for something else eventually. But if we pop the Xeon in there, sorry for my head in the frame, and we close down the cover, I'm gonna put some Arctic Silver CP15 on it. This stuff is uh, from the Cryo Rig cooler, from this one actually. But I actually don't think I made a video. Um, I might have said it in my upgrades unboxing a few weeks ago, a few, a few months ago almost actually. But this is I'm, I use this for testing as opposed to Arctic Silver 5 
for like rebuilding PCs that are going to be used for a long time. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and pop a nice uncooked grain of rice size that might be a bit much, but I guess, I don't know, you guys tell me, is that a good amount of thermal compound? I actually think that looks pretty nice now that I take another look at it. Um, anything else I should say before I put this on? Um, think anything. So I'm going to just go ahead and tighten the screws on the cooler here. You can see they fit like that into this and then they use those little thumb screw things that I took off earlier to go back on. The mounting mechanism and the mounting system on this particular cooler is not the best in the world, I have to say, but I mean, it gets the job done, I guess. And I think I paid 20 bucks for this cooler. Uh, and it was new when I got it, so uh, I can't really complain there, but yeah, I'm going to just tighten those down and then pop this on using the 775 or I guess I think 77X, no, oops, just stepped on a fan, the uh, 1150X things because this is indeed, yeah, see, here's my thing, right? The thumb or the the little things there went they they fell out and I can't really properly screw this back on now without um, taking the entire board off the tray, which I'm nowhere near late or I'm nowhere near the opposite of lazy enough to do that. I am drawing a blank on whatever word on the word you're supposed to use for saying you're not lazy, but. I don't think active is the right word either, but you get what I'm saying. So those two corners seem to be tightened down enough. And then I'm gonna pop these two on. And that is kind of being a minor pain, but there we go. So the cooler is now on and of course, We pan down just a little bit. We're gonna wrap the cooler, uh, the heatsink fan cable around the cooler, and then uh, plug it in to the CPU fan holder. It is uh, C or it's uh, case fan, CPU, case fan, case fan, and then case fan, or system fan is what those are labeled as, but kind of the same thing. I mean, they really are the same thing. Um, as for plugging it into a monitor, I do have a VGA cable down there. That is a first, having a cable that I actually need. Um, and then I need a uh, another IEC. I need two IECs for this. Um, so I have everything plugged in now, and we're almost ready to turn it on. Just have to plug in the power supply. And the standby lights come on on the board. That's good. Uh, also ignore the Minecraft screen recording thing in the background. I'm just testing a redstone clock with a duration of 50 minutes or so. Um, so I'm going to screen record it, throw it into iMovie, then time lapse it so I can actually like not waste like three hours of my life watching it and waiting for it to do stuff. Anyway, um, I'll point all that aside. Uh, let's go ahead and turn on the board. So this board, if you remember uh, back, um, has those, you can see my bowl of cereal from earlier. Um, it has two wires sticking out of it, and those, if I jump those together, simulate the power button being pressed. So let's go ahead and do that. You know, it would help if the monitor was plugged in. Uh, the system posts, or at least it gets to the same point as the i7 did. I think now the monitor should turn on. There we go. Just restart it. I 
So the fan goes at full speed when it turns on, and when it posts, it ramps the fan down. It's like uh, normal servers kind of do. Okay. Oh, we got a green light on the monitor. Looks like it. All right. Awesome. So this hardware does indeed work. So. Awesome. So yeah, Xeon works and the motherboard works. Uh, it also takes standard RAM, I guess. Doesn't have to be ECC. So on that note, I think it is time to end this video. Um, as for this, I was thinking about it. And earlier I said I probably wasn't gonna use it in the server, but my Mac Pro server down there, uh, keep in mind Mac Pro server, the one I use for the server has a quad core 2.8 gigahertz socket 1366 Xeon. This is a two, no, this is a 3.1 gigahertz socket 1155 Xeon. So this is probably more powerful than that. I'm going to do some tests and see if it actually is. But if it is, then I think I'm going to build this into my server because right now I only use file sharing. Um, yeah, file sharing, and I have two Minecraft servers running, that's what that's on. Um, so this would be uh, pretty nice for that. I could also um, throw the ECC RAM in here. Um, so yeah, I'd probably put Windows on it. Maybe there will be a video in the future on that. Um, so yeah, with that said, uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video.